Hello and welcome back to ASEAN Talent. Today we have an appointment with a young man who has long been involving with works in international development field. Well, his works and his experiences are indeed very interesting. Let's go inside and find out more about him. Pachalapon Poodamlongchai, a former cultural orientation trainer of International Organization for Migration, or IOM, which is the leading inter-government organization in the field of migration, works to ensure the orderly and human management of migration. He is as well a volunteer for Student International Summer Village, or CISV, since year 2000, in the position of local staff, leaders, and international staff. He has been engaging with numbers of projects and camps both in South Asia region and around the world. Well, sitting beside me right now is Kun Pachalapon Potamongchai or Kun Pon. Kun So, what exactly do you do at the moment? At the moment, uh, I'm back home from working away, you know, and just moved back about a year. So, I'm home and taking care of my dad. Well, actually, well, we are being together and he's having a project of building a house, so I have to help him. Why I'm here and helping him building the house, uh, my friend who is a part-time lecturer at the university asked me if I would like to become a part-time lecturer, so I say yes. So at the moment, I'm here at home and also being a part-time lecturer at the um, universities, uh, Silabakon University, and I have courses at the um, Faculty of Pharmacy one and also Faculty of Arts. So I've been looking at your profiles and all the career that you've been, you know, taking off. So can you tell me a bit of your background in international development fields? All right. Uh, before I moved back home, I was working with uh, international organizations. Uh, the first one I worked with, it was International Organization for Migration, or it's called IOM. I worked there since 2006. The first base was in Ratchaburi, mm -hmm. close to Suanpeng, where it's now it's a, a tourist attraction. But when I was there, nothing much there. Uh, so I was there for a year, training the refugees in the campsite, which is called Ban Tamhin. And after that, in 2007, I moved to Mesot, and I was there for about three years, from four years from 2006 to 2010. What do you have to do there? Uh, my position is called cultural orientation trainer. Mm -hmm. So basically I'm a, a trainer or a teacher, basically. Uh, I have classes, so I train the refugees before they move to the third country as they apply. And I train for the ones who are going to Canada, Australia and the States. Uh, there are classes, there are kids class about 8 years old to 12 years old and youth class from 13 to 17 and adult class which is 18 and over and I train them all. So I have uh, different classes. Yep, I see. So what sort of subject that you have to teach them? First, we had only adult and we had 14 topics to cover such as the country overview, it's talking about the seasons in that country, um, the government, where is it, uh, that kind of thing. So they have basic idea about where they are going. And then we talk about how to fly on the airplane, mm -hmm. the seat, seat belt, and how to use a, the bathroom toilet, how to use a tissue paper, because they don't use water on uh, airplane. Yep. And then when they arrive, we have a topic about um, settlement agency, this is the agency of the government who is a representative of the government and give them services, will help them to settle in the, in the country. And also they have to learn about budgeting, employment, education, transportation, cultural adjustment. So they learn about those things. For the youth and kids, we don't have those details, but we teach them about nutrition. Because in the campsite, they everything, you know, if they if they can buy, it's, it's their luxury. So they thought instant noodles, it's good. Mm -hmm. But we have to teach them that it's not healthy for them. And also we teach them about personal hygiene well. because they have limited supply to clean themselves. So we have to 
teach them that there are a lot of things in the you know third country that they can buy and use for themselves. In the campsite, they have you know one condition of schooling, but in the states or in the third country where they are going, they have very nice and good education system, and they are eager to learn about those. So, have you been you know follow up your work as well? I mean, check out. How are they doing in the third country after they move out? Every year they have uh, a program called CO Exchange. Mm -hmm. This program is when all the trainers all around the world will go to the States and then they will meet up and have orientation in DC. And then they will send us to different places. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I went to Pittsburgh in 2007. I went to Pittsburgh. Uh, I, I met out with the agency there. They show me the refugees um, apartment complex mm. where they live, their housing, and then they show us the workplace. So some of them, they work in the hotel. And then I went to Houston. I met uh, with another agency again. One story that I learned there is I met out with Mon, mm -hmm. refugees from Thailand, and then she came to me and, and ta told me a story that First, when she arrived, she got so upset with a cultural um, shock. Mm -hmm. So what she said is she asked her brother to buy her uh, sleeping pills. She wanted to commit suicide herself. That's serious. Yeah, and then I asked what, what happened next. Uh -huh. And then she said her brother went to the, you know, didn't told her that we couldn't buy pills or, you know, drugs without prescription uh -huh. in the States. Uh -huh. And then her friend told her that you have to wait for another four or six months and then the government will send you back. So she waited and waited. When the time passed, she adjusted herself and then she got through and now she's happy in the state. I learn oh, when, when I teach in class, mm -hmm. we, we have the subject about cultural shock and how to adapt uh, themselves. But that's from what I've learned, you know not from the real experience. But then when I got there, I, I've heard from the person who had real experience, and then I, I believe it. You know, when I believed it, I can deliver the message to the refugees personally that this is, you know, this happens to anyone and that can happen to you. So you have to learn to adjust to the new environment. Yep, when we come back, we will find out more about his life and also how he get involved in this international development field. You are good that you can do it because you know some of the people cannot do it. Yeah. So were there any some sort of like excitement that you encountered during the time in the camp? Yes. Um, well, there's different. You know, adventurous. What I say, uh, I would say.